Welcome, viewer, explorers of the past and seekers of untold stories. To history unrevealed some nations need only examine their monuments to rediscover their ancient pasts. Experts have also discovered hidden details thanks to cutting-edge technology, but Wilson wishes this history remained a mystery. The truth about Ireland's past can be found in a tomb. Ireland has its own Valley of the Kings, similar to Egypt's, a windswept and rocky area where great chieftains were buried for thousands of years. Its most famous tomb almost blends in with the countryside. The of every one of these interment locales, some of which date back to a long time back, New Grinch is the crown gem. Dr. Daniel Bradley of Trinity College believed he could succeed where many others had failed because no modern scientist had been able to decipher the new meaning of the Grinches. Together with his colleague Laura Cassidy, the geneticist surveyed the mound and emerged as an authority on ancient DNA. In all actuality, it wasn't similar to the Trinity scientists were kicking off something new. While a proper archaeological excavation began in 1962, County Meath residents had known about the new grunge for centuries and occasionally borrowed stone from the structure for their own homes. Was there anything left for Bradley and Cassidy? The winding passages and rock walls of new grit ingrained them with all the certainty they required. Considering it a liminal space, a spot that rouses a kind of all the Trinity group went chasing after anything that hints of DNA they might find. Cassidy and Bradley hypothesized that anyone associated with the site had to be well-known in society and buried there had to be legendary. Although little is known about the new Grinch's architects, it was clear that this was their best work. This creator common burial chamber visitor Bradley and Cassidy should act as the last resting place for anything that sort of sovereignty drove these old Irish individuals' DNA examination would give the most clear look into their lives as this progress abandoned not very many perceptible clues a wide range of obscure glyphs and drawings beautify the walls of New Grinch. Yet the vast majority of their definite implications are lost to us. The Trinity researchers collected samples from the bones in the main chamber, focusing on a less appealing feature. Past deciding the date of death, Bradley and Cassidy desire to gain where these individuals came from and whom they were connected with. Bradley and Cassidy were surprised to discover that many of these sequences were nearly identical after isolating genes inherited from the person's parents. These likenesses went past the guardians hailing from a similar local area. Despite the fact that incest was probably still a taboo in ancient Ireland, it was much the same as the number of Egyptian traditions that continued driving Bradley to depict the home of New Grinch's Irish pharaohs. This seeing as additionally related with long-held Irish old stories. The King Bristle, who was in a relationship with his sister and died near Newbridge, was mentioned in medieval historical records. The Trinity researchers may have confirmed his identity as well as his Irish ancestry. This tomb's pharaoh, only had traces of indigenous genes in his body, indicating that these Irish rulers came from somewhere else. Expert in prehistoric human migration David Wright pointed out that some of the new Grinch burials occurred hundreds of years apart, which could make any narrative about the Irish people's evolution more complicated. But since leftovers of Ireland's earliest civilizations are covered out of control, in the event that you know where to look, Antiquarians have gotten more leads on the reality of Ireland's past than they thought. A turf cutter from Northern Ireland by the name of Jack Conway set out to work on the Emblebog shortly after it appeared as, though things had settled down at Newgrange. At first completely looked ordinary, yet he was going to uncover something that hadn't come around for one thousands of years. He immediately uncovered it, particularly since it would scarcely be the initial occasion when something puzzling was uncovered from the bugs previously. You see the land that turned into the bugs was once the crossing point of three unique old realms and was believed be a spot with otherworldly powers practically like something out of a high dream film. People would flock in great numbers to the bogs due to the mystical reputation of the area. However, there is a unique property in the bogs that people discovered centuries later. They excellent at preserving whatever is buried below because of their low temperatures, high acidity, lack of oxygen. Irish peat bogs have yielded a veritable treasure trove of artifacts over the course of time. Tools, 
coins, jewelry, and other 1,000-year-old curios have been discovered in relatively good condition due to the bug's resistance to decomposition. The additive properties of the bugs likewise made them valuable for a more vile reason, which made Jack's underlying disclosure a piece troubling. The damp profundities of the Embla Lowland were likewise especially great at embalming bodies. Jack was relieved to learn that he had not discovered a body, but he was still unsure of what he had discovered. It had an especially odd smell to it portrayed as being like areas of strength for a not disagreeable cheddar, Unfit to comprehend the lump covered twelve feet into the swamp, Jack brought in the authorities from the Cavan Province Historical Center. In contrast to modern bricks of salted butter, which can remain fresh for a few months without refrigeration, salt was common in medieval Ireland. As a result of the bug's preservative properties and low temperatures, they functioned as a kind of natural freezer. Many pieces of this hard spread have been found in holders comprised of creature bladders or wood, large numbers of which additionally may do for one thousands of years in immaculate condition. Yet, how could old individuals go through such a difficult situation only for a topping? In medieval times, butter was actually a luxury item that people could use to pay their rent and taxes, just like we wish we could with land o' lakes. There's as yet one significant inquiry concerning this antiquated margarine. The smell of old lowland spread has been contrasted with a stomach-stirring blend of ruined milk and terrible parmesan cheddar, who might be sufficiently valiant to have a go at tasting this then. At that point, Andrew Zimmern really attempted a touch of 3,000-year-old weave margarine on his show Strange Food Sources. He said it tasted like a lot of funk, and had a weird moldy finish, but some people still can't stop trying it for themselves. The 300-year-old knot was really brought into an Irish primary school for the children to trial it for themselves. One way or the other, this old custom is beginning to get on with local people. One local man even made the decision to make his own bog butter. Subsequent to making three pounds of handcrafted margarine Brian Tone, enclosed it by cheesecloth, and covered the bump in the marsh behind his home. After spending a year maturing in the Irish countryside, he dug it up. However, the pattern of de marsh margarine likely won't get on numerous hunks keep on being found. You might see a couple of pieces in Irish historical centers, simply don't be shocked on the off chance that they won't allow you to have a taste. The Goliath ship Cronin spent 300 years peacefully at the bottom of the ocean after sinking in a maritime battle in 1676. Amazingly, the shipwreck location was discovered by an amateur researcher named Anders Franzen in 1980. The Swedish government sponsored annual archaeological dives to collect any remaining artifacts that had been hidden in the ship for all that time. After an exhaustive pursuit of the boat, the jump groups found a lot of old guns, however, that was only the start. At the point when analysts thought they uncover almost everything of significance. When the scientists finally got the can open, they were confronted by an overwhelming, pungent odor like a moldy wall. It suddenly hit them as they stared at the grayish mass. When the Cronin was built, cheese was a real sign of status. However, in this instance, the cheese was well past its best. The Cronin cheese is one of the findings that is on display at the museum. Perhaps they'll run over a pleasant merlot to coordinate with the cheddar. As we reach the final frames of today's video, we want to extend our heartful thanks to each and every one of you for joining us on this adventure. Your time and attention are truly appreciated. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to show some love by liking, commenting, and subscribing. We're immensely grateful for your support. Until our next rendezvous, keep exploring, stay curious, and most importantly, thank you for watching.